Good morning, South Rock. Welcome to another devotion. This isn't over acts though. We are in Mark now. So this video will be a little bit longer because I am going to talk to you about uh, why I chose Mark a little bit. I'm going to talk about the context of Mark and then we're going to jump into chapter one verses at one through eight. So first off, why I chose it. I like Mark. Uh, I to find it an interesting gospel. It's short, but it has so much information packed into it. And I believe personally it was the first one and that kind of transitions me into context. So I believe that Mark was the first gospel written that Matthew and Luke used Mark as source material. Luke even says that he compiled information about Jesus uh, to write his gospel. And so in some of the stories that they use line up very well. So I think Mark was written first. I believe it was written as early as the late 30s, so just like a couple years after Jesus died, uh, into maybe the 40s, so very shortly after Jesus died, which is exciting from a ancient manuscript, ancient story kind of view, because a lot of the times these ancient stories come passed down generation to generation, and we don't get the first-hand account, we get the generations later account. And more than likely, this was written just a couple years after Jesus died, which is fascinating. It is extraordinary that we have that story so quickly after Jesus died. And I believe that is because this is the gospel, according to Peter, written by Mark. I think Peter and Mark were, were traveling together. Uh, we kind of see that. We see that in Acts. And I think Peter is just telling his story. And Mark is writing it down, and they want to get this out as soon as possible to people so that they can hear the story of Jesus. And, uh, you know, he, Mark uses the word immediately all the time through this gospel. And I, again, I think it's that expediency idea. They want, Peter is telling the story quickly and immediately, and Mark is writing it down immediately because they want to send it out immediately. I think that's kind of all that you need to know for context uh, because really what you need to know is this is a story of Jesus and his journey in life up until his death and resurrection. Uh, again, it is quick, but we're going to dive in and, and really look at some things. So first of all, Mark 1, 1 through 8. Starts off with prophecy from Isaiah, and then it talks about John the Baptist, uh, who was wearing camel hair and a leather belt and baptizing people in the wilderness. And when I read this, I just had two very immediate thoughts. The first one was, how exceptional is it? that our God planned to redeem us for this long a time. Isaiah came hundreds, maybe up to like, depending on what you think of Isaiah, maybe even up to a thousand years before Jesus, a couple, at least a couple hundred. And so it's just amazing that we have a God that planned to bring us back to him. We have a God that 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 is that powerful. And so my first question is more of a touchy-feely Bible question, not so much an in-depth look at yourself question, but it's how does that how do you feel about that? How do you feel that God made a plan from the beginning? We I believe that from Genesis 3:15, he had a plan to redeem us back to himself from sin. He had a plan because he loves us that much. How does that make you feel that you serve a God even in this time of coronavirus and civil unrest? We have a God that loves us so much that he would plan for thousands of years just to get us back to him. Second question I thought was this. We have John the Baptist who is uh, wild, <laughs> wild looking at least. He's wearing camel skins and fur and leather belt and he's baptizing people and eating locusts. What are some places in your life that you might have missed the gospel message because of the packaging it came in? You know, what are, what are something that you might have missed what God was trying to tell you because it looked like John the Baptist. Maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was an atheist that was walking by that had something profound to say and you thought, man, that would be deep if you didn't, if he believed in God, but maybe that was a message put to him by the Holy Spirit to get to you. You know, what are, what are something, what is something in your life that you wouldn't buy into just because of the packaging? And, and how can you get past that? Because really, the Holy Spirit can use anybody, can use anything to show you something, to, to show you, a, I don't want to say a message from God, but just reveal the beauty of God, the splendor of God to you. He used John the Baptist. <laughs> Think about who this person looks like. He lives in the wilderness. He has probably sandy, matted hair too, but he is baptizing people and giving them this beautiful message. So what is something that, what is a message that you might have missed because of 
the packaging. Anyhow, uh, we're gonna keep going through this. We're gonna go through Mark for a few weeks and it's gonna be me and Nick mostly. So uh, I hope you enjoy seeing our faces. I love doing this with you. And so I hope you enjoy it too. Have a good morning.